When I, where I normally put in the date for it, I'll put a note. Well, you're supposed to announce it. Yeah. 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 But I mean, if I if I put it where the dates are usually listed in service time. She got to Denver and her flight, it took an hour and a half for her flight to get into a gate. So then she barely made it on her flight. Like, they closed the door behind her. Her connecting flight to Vegas. Her, obviously the suitcase didn't make it on, so they had to go back into her suitcase. Yeah, it's been fun. Testing one, two.
that during the service. If you would, just take a look at your bulletin there with me. And we'll just take a, we'll get right into the service in a few minutes here. For those of you who are watching by Facebook and YouTube later and those who are here in the auditorium, just to give you a few thoughts of what's taking place, uh, choir practice, we are practicing tonight, right, Amy? Choir practice tonight? Yes. Choir practice tonight at 5 o'clock. Choir been letting you off, man, week after week. We've got to have a practice in there somewhere, right? Okay. And then uh, tonight in the service at 6 o'clock, we'll be having a film called Faith of Our Fathers. Um, it'll make you laugh, make you cry. It is a powerful film. It deals with uh, two daddies who became friends in Vietnam and then also their sons later in life and how they get together. So that'll be at 6 o'clock tonight. We'll have a sweet and salty time afterwards. We've got uh, donuts coming this afternoon from a place called Doodles Donuts over in Gloucester. And so you won't want to miss that donuts like this. We're talking about giant donuts, okay? And that'll be after the service tonight or somewhere in there. But bring a friend. This is a powerful film. You know somebody's not saved? A good film to bring them to, uh, to be a witness to. That you will, you will definitely, uh, it'll touch your heart, okay? And touch your friend's heart, too. All right. Um, Yes, see here, Young Adult Christmas Party, Friday, the January the 7th, 6.30 to 8.30, gift exchange at Brother Jimmy's house and Kathy. So you guys, young adults, take notice on that. And there's an address there in the bulletin. Uh, later in the month, we're going to have Youth Sunday, uh, 11 o'clock in the service that morning. We'll have our young people to take over all the service that day. Visitations, got a couple of Saturdays this month for Super Saturday Visitations. And I think that's about it. Is there anything on the back? By the way, Happy New Year to you. Amen? Amen. All right, we're going to get right into the service this morning. Yes, uh-huh. Oh, yeah, Brother Daniel's got one more good announcement you're going to like. Okay? All right. Uh, don't forget about our upcoming Faith Bible Institute starting on the 17th. There is still time to sign up if you have not already signed up. And if you have any more questions, just ask myself or Ms. Jesse about it. It's a great Bible study program for you to take part in. Now, the other thing I was going to talk about is on Youth Sunday, you remember how we did the pie eating and pie baking contest? Yeah, well, we're not doing pies. We're doing cookies. So we're doing a cookie baking contest. If you think that you are some kind of cookie master, then bake two dozen cookies and bring them. One dozen for the judges, like presentation and taste, and another dozen so everyone else can eat your cookies. Okay? The other side of this is a cookie eating contest. So just like we had the pie eating contest with the little Walmart pies that are like this, we're going to sit you down in front of stacks and stacks of stacks of like Chips Ahoy or Oreo cookies and a glass of milk and see how many you can consume in a limited amount of time. All right? There will be judges for this competition. They will be chosen in secret so as to not coerce the judges to, to have the favorite flavors made or anything like that. Okay, we want to be fair. But if you are a participant, if you are a cookie baker, then no one in your family is going to be a judge, just to make sure no bias is out. So we will have a deadline for you to say, hey, I want to sign up and I want to do this. That's more that's coming in the future. But... If you are willing, if you are wanting to, think about your recipes right now. Work on your appetite. Maybe start fasting. We'll see what happens. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>
Aren't you excited to be in a new year this, this wonderful Sunday? I'm excited to be in church this morning. We get to sing a little bit. Would you turn to number 535 with me? Welcome to Central Baptist Church on a Sunday morning. Stand up together. Number 535 every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Don't you believe that? I sure do with all my heart. Let's sing it all together unto the Lord this morning. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day. you let's try one more time give it all you got under the lord now i know these kids are really struggling this morning because i kept them all up the other night but we're going to try to sing a little bit louder and sing with a smile okay let's try it again on this chorus Great singing. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Okay, as we mentioned before service, we're starting to do our announcements before the service, about five minutes till. Uh, just a friendly reminder, don't forget tonight we're having a film, Faith of Our Fathers. You won't want to miss this film. Deals with two guys in Vietnam and also their sons here in the States uh, later in life. So it should be a really powerful, powerful film. Uh, and it'll make you laugh, cry, all of it. It's a wonderful film. We'll have Sweet and Salty Night afterwards. Big donuts from Doodles Donuts. Not no Doodle Doos, but Doodles Donuts that we're going to do after the service tonight with some salty stuff too. So come ready to fellowship and enjoy the, the Christian film tonight in the service, okay? All right, uh, let's see here. Look at our Bible memory verse for the new year. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 2. We're going to say the reference and the verse and the reference again out loud. Here we go. 1 Corinthians 2, 2. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. 1 Corinthians 2, 2. All right, amen. Okay, guys, if you'll come, let's do our offering this morning. Amen. I know some of you are still giving to the Christmas missions offering, and you can do that even today, throughout this week, and even till we'll end it, I tell you, we'll end it next Sunday, and let you know more of how much has come in so far as $495. want to try to give, if we can, to help out the Edge Christian Camp. There's a picture there of some of the new bathrooms they've been building. They need money towards carpeting the building, 4,000 square feet of carpeting, so they can use funds for that. So if you uh, feel led to do so, do so, please get involved with that, okay? All right. Who's praying today, guys? Jimmy? Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you just for the gifts that you give, the good gifts, Father God. Our salvation, Lord God, your son, and whom that is all wrapped up in. Uh, Lord, we uh, just thank you for the, uh, the meals that we have on a daily, Lord God, with the, the places that we have to live. And, and just, Father, you provide so much for us. Lord, I just pray that as we try to walk by faith and not by sight, that, Father God, that we would give, Lord, like it all belongs to you to begin with as it does. And I pray that you just move in our hearts today.
today, Father God, that we might be focused on the upbuilding of your kingdom. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Go ahead and turn to number 95 with me, number 95, and you'll stand up together. We're going to sing this. This will probably be our last time singing this until the Christmas season. Joy to the world. But you have to know, this is not really just a Christmas song. It's actually written for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And one day, Jesus comes back for, for his children. I'm excited for that, aren't you? Oh, man, that didn't sound very enthusiastic. Let's try to get you excited to see Jesus one day. I'm excited about it. On Friday evening, we had our Edge of the Year blowout, which I'm going to show a little bit about that in just a few moments. But we had a young man who came, and uh, I'll actually just go ahead and say it. Um, Brother Scott Carsley, he's the president and founder of the camp. His nephew came on Friday night and trusted Christ as his Savior. And so, man, that, you can't be, you got to be able to praise God about something. And uh, that's something to praise God about. So, number 95, why don't you sing this with all your heart unto the Lord? We'll do all four verses together. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him good. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior. verse together. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes a name great singing. You may be seated. Mr. Daniel, if we can go ahead and get that up there on the screens. Um, while he's doing that, um, thank you so much for praying for us. It was a very crazy Friday night into a Saturday morning. That was one of my first times ever doing that, and um, I'll say uh, by the end of the morning, I was ready to go to bed. <laughs> um, and so it was a great night, though. We had a lot of fun. Um, this is actually a short video. My dad wanted me to show something this morning. Um, this is just a short clip about one of the games that we did in the dining hall. We had about, I think, about 75 to 80 teenagers that came out and uh, saw one young person get saved. I just told you about that. Um, also saw a young man that got assurance of salvation and can't praise the Lord for that. Uh, praise the Lord enough for that. And um, then also another young man that said his grandma had been talking to him about salvation. And he said that he wanted to go home and talk to her some more. And so pray for him. Um, I believe his name was Dylan, and so uh, keep trust, or Zach, sorry, um, keep praying for him as well. I will say this, I gave the invitation, and it blew my mind. It really shouldn't, because like Brother Jimmy, my Sunday school teacher, was talking about this morning, 
uh, having faith, walking by faith and not by sight. I gave the invitation, and there was probably 10 or 15 hands that went up to, to want to get saved. Um, only a few went back, and it's really hard to, to, a lot of times it's hard on just one service um, to really get a reaction or someone to actually stand up and go to the back. Um, but there was a few that actually had the courage enough to do it. So pray for the ones that, that didn't. Um, I did have a time where they could pray in their seat. Um, of course, we know it's not about the prayer that saves them, but their heart um, really believing on Christ. But there were several people that did that, and so I'm very excited about that. Pray for them. Um, pray for next year as well. We're very excited about that one as well. Um, this is one of the games, I believe this was at, I think this was at 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning. Um, one of those. This was the second big game. Uh, first one we did kind of like an obstacle course, and so that was kind of fun. Uh, this is the second one. This is called trash get ball. The goal of the game is you have, you're kind of like against each other, almost like foosball if you've ever played that, and your goal is to block the other team from getting the ball into the trash can. And the trash cans are on the ends of each um, sides of the chairs. So you have two on this side, as you can see. And so Mr. Daniel, why don't you go ahead and play that one? It's only like a 15 second video, but you can kind of see what it did. Oh. oh, so close, so close. So close. Oh, oh, a point for the blue team. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We had a great time together. And um, we're, we're going to hopefully get some more pictures together very soon. But just want to say thank you so much for praying. God is still working. I preached on God, God's goodness on Friday night. And uh, if you don't know the goodness of God, you missed everything. Um, so wonderful. If you'll go ahead and turn one more place in your song books this morning, number 457, before we actually sing this song, if you'll stand up with me, we have an anniversary that's tomorrow, and Miss Erica is looking at me like, don't do it, <laughs> but we have Mr. Jerry and Miss Erica's 24th anniversary, but Mr. Jerry did ask me to say that tomorrow is his 24th anniversary, but for her it's about a 50th anniversary, um, so... <laughs> No, we're very excited for them. Do you have any others that I'm missing this morning? We have a lot of birthdays, which I'm going to get to in just a second. All right, so let's sing happy anniversary, and then we'll do happy birthday, okay? Here we go. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary. God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. And many more. Or maybe Miss Erica doesn't want any more. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No. And, all right, so I know Isabel's birthday was yesterday. We sang happy birthday to her a little after midnight. Um, so that was cool. Any others that I'm missing? All right. Jonathan, Brother Jonathan, when's your birthday? The fourth. The fourth. Okay, awesome. So Tuesday. All right, is that Tuesday? Yeah, awesome. Um, any others I'm missing this morning? I don't want to miss any. Um, I'm going to make sure I didn't miss any in the bulletin. Let's see. Yeah, I think that's the two for this week. So let's sing happy birthday to these folks. All right, here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Amen. We'll go ahead and take your hymnals, 457. More, more about Jesus. We're going to do the first, second, third, and fourth verses. We're going to be Unusual Baptists this morning, okay? So let's see on that first verse. More about Jesus would I know. More of His grace to others show. More of His saving fullness see. More of His love who died for me. More. died for me more about jesus let me learn more of his holy will discern spirit of god my teacher be showing the things of christ to me more more about jesus communion with my Lord, hearing His voice in every line, 
made he king equal, saying mine. More, more about Jesus. last verse together. More about Jesus on his own. Riches and glory all his own. Good. Sing it out now. On that chorus. Here we go. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness. Miss Amy, hit the first notes on that chorus. Let's try it a cappella real quick. Here we go. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness. See. More of his love who died for me. Great singing this morning. You may be seated. Miss Amy's going to do a special at this time for us. testing. Can we hear me? All right, good. Young people, we have what is called a junior church. My wife teaches, and she's heading out that way, and if you would like to go, help yourself. Okay. I like that song, Amy. That's a good song. And, uh, this new year is all in the Savior's hands, isn't it? 
Oh, by His grace. Oh, by His grace. And uh, we have a, a dear young lady here that all by God's grace, she's here today. Um, Miss Sandy Charnick. Amen. Welcome back, Miss Sandy. Hey, but yeah, yeah, we're glad she's back. Yes. It's been five or six months, bless her heart. She had, had six months, yeah. Had broke her foot really bad, and so she's back in the service. We're glad you're back, Miss Sandy. Amen. All right, we're going over to Ezekiel chapter number 7. Ezekiel chapter number 7. If you're visiting with us, we're glad you're here and make yourself right at home. I hope we have a visitor's packet that I'm sure the guys have either gotten to you or we can get one to you after the service. And we have a gift we want to give to you too. So we're just glad you chose to be with us today. Um, pray for those who might be traveling out of town for the or uh, Christmas and New Year's. I hope that your Christmas was a good time. This past Wednesday night, I forgot to wish you a Happy New Year because that would have been the last time I would have seen you for the year, right? <laughs> right? Okay, so Happy New Year to you and to your family. And uh, we had a wonderful time with our family and, of course, our, part of our family working at the camp for the edge to end of the year edge blowout. We were involved with the camp across the river, the James River, uh, for those of you who might not know, called the Edge Christian Camp. My son Kerry is the camp director there, and so uh, they are doing all kind of neat stuff and all kind of good things. Seniors, we're going to try to take you over to a senior Saturday they have over there this year. And then um, guys and young guys, uh, the beginning of March, I think it's a couple of nights where we went last year with our men and our young men and had a prayer advance, one of the most powerful meetings I've ever been in. I literally thought it was going to break out into revival. Because when you have men and young men who want to pray and come to it, it was about 50 of them. Uh, it was amazing. It really was. I'm looking forward to that. That's probably my favorite meeting at the edge for me as an adult throughout the entire year. So I want to encourage you guys to come and go and be with us. Uh, it's, it's an exciting time in the Lord. All right. Um, uh, Ezekiel chapter 7. Normally, I would have preached something like this last Sunday. But God led me a different route, and last Sunday I preached on the Sunday morning on, continued a little bit in the, from the Christmas story, and I preached on angels after Christmas. I very seldom ever speak on angels, but the angels that we found in the Bible and so forth, and, and how we can see what they do in, God's li in our lives and how God uses them. And then last Sunday night we preached on uh, Christmas gifts given in the Christmas story, they're yet to come. We preached on Christ will sit on David's throne. We preached on the fact that he was going to be in in charge of the kingdom and the millennium. And we went on from there and listed some different Christmas gifts that were promised in the Christmas story that are yet to come. I don't know about you, I like to... Uh, have you ever, you ever saved a gift after Christmas? Just one gift and maybe open it? No? Okay. I am told, I am told that literally, um, maybe I shouldn't run a rabbit here, but I'm going to. Some people have a very difficult time at Christmas. For some, it's a very much a time of joy. For others, it can be a very lonely time. And some people do, there are more suicides at Christmas time than any other time in the year. Amen. Isn't that amazing? That just amazes me. It I boggles my mind. Uh, I don't see how, if a person knows Christ, how they can think that way. But um, I know it's possible. And there are some that, that does happen, and sad to say. Uh, but uh, one, one preacher I heard preaching one time, he said, one of the ways to get you through Christmas and get you beyond Christmas is save a few presents afterwards and open up a present a day. And it kind of cheers you up as you go on past the new year, you know. I'd like to add a little something to that. What about having a, two, three, four presents and you opening them up with a friend? giving it to a friend. Who knows, I may have st started a new fad here or something, you know? You never know. But think about it. It is a hard time on some folks during this time of year. But the phrase in the Bible that I want to preach on this morning, and, and I, I preach expositorily through text, and I like to preach topically, which I'm going to do this morning, and um, textually, textually taking a text and using other verses in the Bible to support that text. Uh, Kind of a little mixture of textual and topical this morning, mainly topical. 
Something I would have preached probably last Sunday, like I said. I'm preaching on the subject, an end of the year is come. An end of the year is come. Now, hang tough with me, because next, next Sunday, the Lord willing, if the Lord tarries, which I pray He doesn't, uh, I'll be preaching on what, on, uh, what I want for in the new year. What I would, from the Bible, what can I want in my life as a Christian for the new year. All right. Verse number one of Ezekiel chapter seven. Ezekiel is giving the prophecies of the judgment that's going to take place to the nation of Israel, or to Judah, excuse me, as they're going to go into exile. Verse number one. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Also thou son of man, thus saith the Lord God unto the land of Israel. An end, the end is come upon the four corners of the land. Now is the end come upon thee, and I will send mine anger upon thee. Israel, Judah had rebelled against the Lord just like Israel had. And will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense upon thee all thine abominations. And mine eye shall not spare thee, neither shall I have pity. But I will recompense thy ways upon thee, and thine abominations shall be in the midst of thee. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, and evil only, excuse me, and evil, and only evil, behold, is come. An end is come. The end is come. It watcheth for thee. Behold, it is come. Uh, the morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwellest in the land. The time is come. The day of trouble is near, and not the sounding again of the mountains. Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee, and accomplish mine anger upon thee, and I will make thee according, judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense thee for all thy abominations. I'm preaching on the text, verse 6. An end is come, the end is come. If you think about certain things in our lives, there are times where God finally says, an end is come. Now we're finishing out, we just finished out 2021. And I think most of you and I are thinking the same thing. I'm glad that's over, right? Well, I hope that it hasn't been altogether that way. But you know, we have a lot of things that we're accountable to God. One is our talents and our tithes and things like that as we give to the Lord. But also our time. And I'm not preaching necessarily on time uh, this this year. But I I do want to kind of bring that out. There are a lot of hours in a year's time time. Uh, There are 8,760 hours and 365 days. There are 31,536,000 seconds in every um, 365 days. Uh, If you started out and you came to Sunday school this morning, I want to encourage you, come to Sunday school. Um, If you came to Sunday school and you're here in the building maybe a couple hours, you're here out of 120 minutes out of those 8,760 Hours, if you please, two hours of it, and 7,207, 200 seconds passed through your life. You say, preacher, if I knew it was going to be that much, I'm tired out, I'll go on home, right? Well, I hope not. And, but time does have an ending. And sometimes for some folks it has an ending. I was, I was reading about a, a, a man who was, uh, excuse me, a couple of young men. And they were uh, young Christians, excuse me, excuse me, they were Christians in this church, and they were always witnessing to people. And one guy came across a sailor, and he was witnessing to this young sailor and trying to get him saved. Um, And the young sailor just said, I don't want anything to do with that. I've got my life to live. I know what I want to do. Uh, I don't want anything to do with that. Well, uh, those two young men who were from the church, they actually uh, were men who worked in the emergency room at the local hospital. A few hours later, an ambulance pulled up with two men. And one of them happened to be, as you can imagine, one of the sailors. Both of them were tried to be delivered, but both did not make it. And we're reminded of things like that, that can and do happen in this life. You know, we take our lives in in going out here, just driving up and down 134, as I've said before. We don't know when our end will come. Obviously, your end has not come yet. You're here. Amen. You made it through 2021. But sometimes an end comes very shortly. And we have to be prepared for that end, if you please. Uh, 
when you think about it, an end of the year and the beginning of another year, there are a couple things that come to mind. One is, at first, the future for a believer is absolutely certain. Now, don't, don't misjudge me in what I'm going to say. For a believer, God, has, God is in control of our lives. We know He allows things in our lives. For a believer who loves God, called according to His purpose, we have uh, things that God allows in our lives, and yes, hard times, bad times, good times, and so forth. But those things are not outside the love of God for us. And there are certain things that are in our lives as believers. Now, there are also, when you think of the end of a year, an end of a year has come, and a new year begins, there are also uncertain things that happen in our lives that we are not sure are going to take place, or maybe even a lost person isn't sure, like the story I just shared with you. Uh, but there is a future. Our future is certain, and yet our future is uncertain. Saved or lost. But especially for the saved, God has a certain moving in our lives. Um, who knows when, the, when your health is going to break? Who knows when the greatest test that you've ever gone through in your life may come to you this year? Uh, who knows what the next 24 hours will hold, for that matter? You know? Uh, our lives can change in a matter of a few moments. We need to be prepared. We can be prepared if we're saved. We know Christ is our Savior. Our future is certain, but our future is also uncertain. The Bible says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. I want to give you a few thoughts this morning on an end has come. Number one, an end of a nation comes. This nation he's talking to that would go into exile. Yes, they came back from exile. But there was a day when the end of Israel came. You say, preacher, what are you talking about? There's Israel over in the Middle East, isn't it? But there was a time when God dealt with a nation who had sinned against Him and sinned against Him and sinned against Him to finally He had said, this is it. This is the end. Um, and God dealt with that nation. Everything, everything that you and I have as believers is because God started with a nation of people called the Jews. Precious people, God's people, God's chosen people. God chose those people to have a, a purpose, and that purpose was, of course, one day that they, they would produce a Messiah. And that Messiah would be called Jesus Christ, and you could be born again, because God chose in the beginning to choose a nation of people, the Jews. Did that through Abraham. The Bible is a story of a nation, as well as a story of a body of people called the local church, the bride, uh, the Lord's people. Um, what a revelation to know uh, that all that God has done through the nation of the Israelites and the Jews. Genesis chapter 12, don't turn there. The Bible says, God speaking to Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Has the Jew been, I say it respectfully, has the Jewish nation been a blessing? Yes, it has. A lot of the inventions that you and I enjoy today are done because of God's giving wisdom to the Jew. God has given the, the ability to the Jew to make finances. God has given them. America has been blessed because America has been a friend to the Jew. Next part of the verse says, And I will talk, God speaking to Abraham about the Jewish nation that will come. And I will bless thee. And make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God says, I've got a plan for this nation called the Jewish nation, Israelites. And what I'm going to do with the world, I'm going to do starting through this nation. I've got a plan, and I'm going to do this. And out of that nation came a tribe. And out of that nation, out of that tribe came a family. And out of that tribe came a Messiah called Jesus. We find his genealogy in Luke chapter 1 and in Matthew chapter 1. And all that God has ever done for this old sin-cursed world, he started by doing through a man and through a nation called the Jews. But God said, there will come an end to my patience with you. 
and I will put an end to the Jews, to the, of the nation of Israel, not the Jews themselves. But I will put an end to that. And I have failed, favored you. You are a peculiar people unto me. But I will put an end to the nation of Israel. Uh, nothing ever happened in this world, with the exception of Calvary, there's any greater picture of deliverance uh, that we see in, in, by the Jewish nation and God delivering was uh, when they delivered them out of Egypt and, out of the, and across the Red Sea. It's a great picture of deliverance from out of the world. We were born again. We have been crossed over the Red Sea of life, if you please, and been made anew in Christ Jesus. It, the, all the pictures of the Jews and the Jewish nation come, the sacrifices that were done by the nation for thousands of years. Picture the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice of Christ at Calvary. And the cross, the cross is the greatest exception to all that great deliverance. And God says there's going to be a deliverance. And He delivered His people and He led them. And He, was ble he blessed His people. He said, I'm going to take into Canaan. And He took them into Canaan. He gave them and delivered them, delivered their enemies into their hands. And God said, the blessing will come upon this one nation, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Most of us here are Greeks. But God is still working His purpose. But He finally came to an end with the nation of Israel. And one day God said that nation, a Savior would come. But He also said an end would come. For 2,500 years, there was no such thing as the nation of Israel. I want you to think about that. Because I'm going to mirror the picture there to America. We become so at ease with what we have been blessed with in this nation that we think that God will not have an end to this nation. Surely, preacher, God would not take away America, would he? I don't know. I know he did that with the Jewish nation. You say, but preacher, what about them becoming a nation again in 1948, right? And they have been. The fig tree blossomed. Yes, it did. <clears throat> but the land of Israel and that land of Jordan, it is still not all the Jews. There is still division. There is still different, just in Jerusalem alone, all the different facets of different religions. Even the temple where it is is a mosque now, a Muslim mosque. So is, is this really... Is it a, what we think of it as the nation of Israel? Something to just think about. The land of Israel, yes, it's come back again. God has seen to that. But there was an end that came. And ladies and gentlemen, if God will do that to His own people who are so precious to Him, do you, do you, and I believe America is precious to God, but I also believe God does judge sin. And we have to keep that in mind. We need to pray for our nation. The end of the nation came. I believe also there's an end of the dispensation of grace that you and I live in will one day end. Those of you who believe in dispensations in the Bible, and if you don't, that's fine. One day you get to heaven, you'll find out I was right and you were wrong, or somebody else. There are many other preachers who believe it too, by the way. What are dispensations? What are we talking about? Periods of time in which God deals in a particular way with a people. Whereas the dispensation... Uh, the age of innocence in the garden with Adam and Eve. There's the dispensation or time period of conscience after they had sinned. And there's the dispensation of the promise that God would again send a Messiah or come, Genesis 3.15. There was the dispensation of human government that was formed. You know, there are three institutions that God ordained. God ordained the church, God ordained the home, and God ordained government. God ordained the home first, God ordained government, and then He God ordained the church in this day of grace that we have uh, for today. And the dispensation of the law that came through Moses and so forth. And it finally ended that dispensation of the law at Calvary when Christ fulfilled the law. Right. Amen. Amen. And now we have, we, you, are living in a, you and I are living in a day of grace. And the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, the Bible Amen. says. Whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. That salvation is free to us. We need no other mediator. I don't have to go between a Jewish priest 
or any other priest for that matter, to gain access to God. I am now a priest of the Lord. If you're saved, you're a priest of the Lord. Did you know that? And you have a priest, a high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ, who there is one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. So he is our high priest that we go to. We're living in a day of grace. It's a throne of grace that we come to in Hebrews chapter 4. As we come to that throne of grace, we can receive what we have a need for. Praise God for that. And one of these days, God is going to end. And end will come to this day of grace. Jesus will step out into the clouds. And those who are born again, by way of the grave, will first. And then those of us alive and remain will be caught up together, meet them in the clouds, in the air. And we'll be with the Lord. Amen. Amen. And this day of grace will end. Say, preacher, I, I, I don't understand. Even after that, well, how can this day of grace end? All the saints taken on up. Who else is taken up? The Holy Spirit of God. Say, but preacher, I believe someone can be saved during the tribulation period. Yes, I do too. I believe that can be true too. I believe it's somebody who maybe never heard the gospel. The Bible talks about those who have heard before that time when Christ comes. Um, they will not have another chance. The Bible says they will believe a lie. Amen. Satan will be at work, most definitely. But there will be those who will preach the gospel during that time uh, of the tribulation period. Uh, God says, my spirit will not always strive with man. But one day his spirit will be taken up. And the day of grace will end in that sense. For those who had a chance and could have been saved but didn't get saved, they wish they had. Preacher, you're kind of preaching a sad message. Well, I'm trying to help us understand there is an end of life. There's an end where God's grace and, and sometimes there are people that I've known that God has said, okay, that's it. I've extended my conviction. I've extended my Holy Spirit to speak to your heart. I've given the Word of God. The preacher and the Sunday school teacher have taught and preached. You've said no and no and no and no and no. Can there be an end of time where God does that? Yes. It can be. I'm uh, not trying to leave out grace by no means. And then the Antichrist reigns. He's going to have his, his day, that's for sure. The Bible teaches these things will come to pass. Uh, and then there's God opportunities that we have a chance. God-given opportunities will come to an end. Uh, Jesus said, uh, when the disciples came back to him at the well, he had won the woman at the well. She went into town, told everybody what had happened to her. She got saved. And then the disciples came, and remember they'd gone into town to get bread and get food and come back and give him something to eat and all. He said, I have food that uh, you know not of. I have something to eat that you know not of. I'm not hungry, basically. I have meat to eat that you know not of. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. In other words, he's saying, don't you, don't you, don't say you don't have, you got to wait four months and then have a harvest. I just led this woman right here to myself. She just got saved. She just went into the town and told everybody she had gotten saved. John 9, 4, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. What is he saying? An end comes. The night cometh when no man can work. An end will come. One of the young men that I had the privilege of being a pastor in, on the Outer Banks of North Carolina, um, young teenager, about 13, 14 years of age, he came to me one time, he said, Preacher, I think God's dealing with my heart about going in the ministry and, and preaching and being a pastor or, or something in the ministry. And uh, I said, that's wonderful, Troy. That's just great. I'll pray with you about that. And as time went on, he came back to me 
And he said, Preacher, God settled it in my heart. And you know what verse he quoted? The verse I just read to you. The night cometh when no man can work. I said, Troy, do you know that God is calling you in the ministry? Yes, I do, preacher. That young man went over to the western part of North Carolina, and to the day, he's preaching the Word of God and salvation by grace through faith. God deals with hearts. A preacher can't call anybody into the ministry. God has to deal with a heart. Maybe some of you hear that God has been dealing with your heart about the gospel ministry. Well, my dear friend... If anything, that verse right there ought to help you a little bit. The night cometh when no man can work. We say, oh, there's still four months and then comes the harvest. Oh, no. The harvest is white right now. The harvest is white. Uh, I was reading a story of a man who went off to Bible college. And some of you maybe been off to school and you've struggled financially to pay your bill, you know. And this young preacher, he, he was really struggling. Matter of fact, the guy who was a financial officer of the school came to him, now here we go, 12 different times and told him he'd have to leave because he didn't have the finances to continue. And so for the 12th time, he got on a bus and started heading home. He he said, my mama, my mama would send me money. My mama did laundry to help me put me through school, but she just didn't, couldn't make enough. And so I started to go home, and I thought, well, I'll preach a few places, and I'll try to raise enough funds to go back to school and try to finish out. He was very, very discouraged. You ever, you ever been in a place like that? You ever felt like you just want to quit and give up? When I, when I was, I'm, I'm not really trying to talk about myself. I'm really not. But I, that's the only illustration I can think of to help under, understand this. When I got sick with cancer after my first year in Bible college, I went back home, and, and I had intention to go back, and I did, but I was so sick, and it was this time of the year, right now, this time of the year, going into the second semester in Chester, Virginia, snow deep on the ground. I was taking chemotherapy and radiation, and I just couldn't go no more. And I went on back home. I thought, this is it. You know, I'll try to go back. As time went on, the devil sat on this shoulder and said, you know, you might as well find something else to do. Just forget that. Don't, don't go back. And I started listening. You know, you ever thought about quitting? You ever thought about giving up? So I did. And somehow the Lord led me to old Dr. Robertson over in Portsmouth. And I sat across from him at his desk, and I said, Dr. Robertson, I don't, I don't think I'm going back to school. He said, why? And he went on from there. He said, let me share something from the Word of God. And he pulled out that verse in there about how what God starts, he finishes. And... Uh, He said, go back to school. (laughs) That old bony finger, go back to school. He had a little bit of a crooked nose. And that old preacher said, you go back. And I went back, and I'm glad to listen to him. I'm glad to listen to the Word of God. I'm glad the Spirit of God dealt with my heart. Sometimes you feel like giving up. This preacher got on that bus going home, and he sat down, as God would have it, next to another preacher young preacher, who was going through the exact same things he was going through. He said, I don't have enough money to finish school. This has happened a couple times here. I'm just not going to do it. I'm going to quit. I'm going on home. I just don't think I can make it anymore. God called me to preach, and I went to school for a year, but I think I'm going to have to just give up on this. This brother preacher didn't say anything. But he kind of agreed with him. It almost, you ever get around some people and you, you get somebody so down and you're already down and you try to lift them up or either their negativity drives you down further with them. Nobody likes to have the mully grubs by themselves. We all like to be consoled in the sense of, 
Oh, yes, you got it so bad, and I do too. And then we start remembering all the bad things we've had done. Instead of remembering God has a plan and God has a purpose. Well, that guy got off at his stop, and our preacher friend decided that day. He said, all right, I can either go down that road he's going, or I'm going to go back, get a few dollars, come back, come back to school, and finish on out. And he did. Esau thought he was going to have it made, didn't he? One crucial moment in his life, one moment of time. He sold his birthright for a mess of pottage, or porridge. The Bible says he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Sometimes an end comes when you give up. If you gave up during 2021, enlist up again. Get in there and serve the Lord. 2022 is a new year. Let God use you in this year. If you quit, then get back in there and serve Christ. Amen, Amen, preacher. Get back in serving Jesus. We can all find our quitting places, but we must not quit. Let me give you one more thought here. The end of all flesh came. God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. You know the story, the judgment of the flood. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. And God did destroy that generation that Noah lived in. It was a, a day of immorality, a day of drunkenness, a day of violence, a day of materialism. Sounds a little bit like America, doesn't it? Folks, don't go out here thinking the preacher is against America. I love my country. I love our country. But I I grieve because I see so many things that's taking it down the wrong path. The Bible tells us that. Matthew 24 says, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Jesus is teaching. It's going to happen. And we're living in a lot of that right now. Men have no time for God. We're living as if there is no judgment coming. We're living as if there is no end that will come. But God again says, My spirit will not always strive with man. Sometimes, sometimes God says an end to come in His dealing with you and me. Turn to Him today. You ever heard a preacher say this? An end of life comes. One guy was up preaching about the end of life had comes. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. And this fellow was sitting in the audience, the congregation, he said, I keep hearing these preachers always preaching about, an end is coming, an end is coming, the end is coming, it's near, you know. Central is a church that's been around for quite some time. On the membership books, you'll find the names of many people. And then you'll see something with a little hyphen, maybe in the word next to it, deceased. And that person, if they knew Christ, went on to be with the Lord in glory. Like it was said to Hananiah, this year thou shalt die. We don't know what a year will hold. Preachers sometimes tell stories to get people to... See the need of Christ and not go out of, this, out of this life without Jesus. One preacher again who was preaching, he said, why are you preachers? He talked to the, this guy in the pew, talked to him afterwards. He said, why are you preachers always trying to scare everybody? It is not an enjoyable message to preach. It really isn't. Why are you trying to scare everybody? <clears throat> Preacher said to him, So I tell you what, you promise me that you will never die. Promise me you'll never die. 
And I promise you, I'll never mention it to you ever again. He said, I can't promise you that. And the preacher said, well, I can't promise you, I'll never mention it to you again. Why sometimes our preachers preach with urgency and a need for, yes, getting us to wake up. Maybe if their heart's right, maybe it's not so much that they're trying to just scare you. Maybe they are afraid or scared for you. There is a mama or daddy in this room or grandma or grandpa that if your grandchild or your child was going down the wrong road, that you wouldn't try your best to try to steer them back to what is right. Amen. Because you know for what is right is what is good for them. Amen. Because we also know that sin has a payday. And we know that we will answer to God one day, and we must know there will be an end that will come to our lives. Man, when I was young, I thought I'd live for eons of ages, Al. Just lived it up. And as I get closer to the end, and I'm not preaching myself into the grave today, okay? But as I get closer to the end, I don't know what my time will come. None of us do. It's our job to be ready for it, to be prepared for it, and help others to be prepared for it. How does the, how does the end come? All right. I've been in the ministry for a little while now, and... Um, I've been with people as they were dying. I've seen some very unusual things, just like maybe some of you have seen when you've been with a loved one who's dying. I heard of a story of a lady who, who actually almost planned her death. She knew she was dying. But she said, I just want to have all my family around the bed. I want to be able to tell them about something spiritual that will help them as they leave. Uh, and as I leave this world, and I want to maybe give them a little something or something in my will or however it is, I just want to do that. She's about one of the very few I've ever seen do that. Most, or I've ever heard doing that. Most people never go that way. Most people today usually go into a type of a comatose state, and they're gone. Or either we give them a bunch of medicine to help them to relieve them of the pain. And I'm not against that. There are a lot of deathbed statements made. You don't hear about them anymore because of a lot of the medicines. But 100, 200 years ago, there were people that were unsaved that were literally screaming that they knew they were going to face God in eternity and be in a, in a place called hell forever. There were others who were, <laughs> like I, we had this little lady, 95 years of age, Miss Cox. She was laying in her bed. She lifted them little hands up. I see them. I'm going home. I'm coming. Glory to God. Amen. You know? Or like Pastor Crocker said to his granddaughter who was attending to him as a nurse, it's beautiful over there, Aaron. It's beautiful over there. Most people don't go that way. I've seen, and you all have heard of many who've gone through very tragic deaths. And the doctor comes out and says, would you have a seat? I need to talk to you and the family. This loved one, your loved one is departed. And there is a way of death. I'll never forget. I watched a man die who was a large man who was actually a funeral home director, Bob. And he was trying not to give up. And every breath, and every breath, he'd be, he'd try to take a breath. The doctor came and said, it's going to be a while. This man has the heart, and this is the doctor's words, of a bull elephant. He's not willing to give up. But after a while, and the saddest part is Pastor Carter and I were the only ones there. And we watched that man breathe his last breath. 
I said, Preacher, you're just trying to scare me. Well, I'm scared for you. If you don't know Christ, you need to be saved today. You don't need to leave this place without Jesus. I still believe in the old-fashioned going to the grave because there I've noticed people when they see a hole in the ground and whether you, you have thousands of dollars or whether you have just a few pennies, your grave will be next to the, next to the man who has the thousands of dollars or the man who has a few pennies. That hole in the ground makes no difference. Right. And if you go out and your end comes without Jesus, I beg you, I pray you, in Christ's stead, be saved, be born again. Amen. Don't let your end come without Jesus. Okay? Let's bow for prayer. For some, the end comes unexpectedly. For some, it comes quickly. Whether it is, it does come. Are you ready? There's an old song in the hymn book. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? The end of a year has come. And we have no promise of tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even as a vapor of smoke that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away, James says. Our life is just like a puff of smoke. It's here a while and it's gone quickly. What we do as far as our eternal state must be done now. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Come to Jesus today. We're going to have an old-fashioned invitation. And what that means is you can come to Jesus today and be saved. You're not joining our church. You're not getting baptized. You're coming to Christ who died for you. Knowing that we need a Savior. Come to Jesus today. Repent. Turn to Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Preacher, I can't live it. I, I just know I can't live it. Well, I, got, I guarantee you, I know you can't either. And I can't either myself. I need a Savior to save me and I need a, a Lord and a Savior to help me through this life to guide me how I can live a life that pleases Him. Please stand with heads bowed and eyes closed. I'm going to step down in front of the communion table. If you'd like to come, trust Christ today. Come to Jesus. We're not here to embarrass you. but We want you to come. Come to the Savior today. Be born again. Know that if you died, you'd go to heaven. is open. You can come. Someday you'll hear God's final call to you to take His offer of salvation true. This could be it, my friend, if you but knew God's final call. God's final how can you live another day in sin thinking someday with Christ you will begin oh will you hear above the world's loud din God's final If you reject God's final call of grace, you'll have no chance your footsteps to retrace. All hope will then be gone. And
and doom your face. Oh, hear this call. Oh, hear his call. Some of you have loved ones that you're so burdened about. My heart goes out to you. We all have friends, people who are neighbors and loved ones that we're concerned about. I would like to ask you to recommit this year to knowing that there's an end will come for your friend or your loved one. And I know you don't want them to spend an eternity without Christ. And you want them to be in heaven with you. Start anew. Start anew praying for them. Maybe you've stopped praying for them sometimes out of sight, out of our minds, and yet it shouldn't be. It's someone's soul, which is more valuable than anything else. A friend of mine reminded me this morning, someone's soul is valuable. What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You give the whole world, you gain the whole world, but without Christ, you have nothing. Maybe there's someone this year, some people, some family, a loved one, or maybe a co-worker that you're burdened about. My dear friend, don't give up. Let the compassion of Christ flow through you. Don't give up on them. Let's do what we can to share the good news with them. Carrie sang that song this morning. That's a song I heard as a teenager years ago as my youth director, assistant pastor then. He and his wife sang that song, and I never forgot it. God's final call. It's in our hymn book, by the way. God's final call. Christians pray if we would. We have some praying at the altar. going to look out this way. Uh, kind of a somber type message, but one I hope that will open our eyes to see that we have a responsibility that, and you have hope. You know, I'm told that the greatest crime in the desert is to know where water is and not tell anybody. We're in a desert of sin out there and a lot of people need the water of life that you have. Do everything, commit this year to what you can do to reaching others with the gospel of Jesus Christ. When you stand before the Lord, you'll be glad you did. Yes. Father, dismiss us with your love now, I pray. Thank you for this new year to start, Lord. And we know the end of the year has come, but we know also this new year is beginning. And we know, Father, that you will use and, and glorify your name through our, our, our clay-like lives. And may you be... May we see folks saved, Lord. People come to know you as their personal Savior in 2022. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight, 5 o'clock, choir practice. 6 o'clock, film, Faith of Our Fathers. Sweet and salty night. Come, enjoy the fellowship, and then bring somebody to hear that film. They will hear the gospel through it.